doing something else. But, hmm? Proverbs is next, so we just may continue right in to the book of Proverbs. Just have some responsive reading there. Now we've been talking on the statue of a perfect man, obviously for six this is now number sixty-nine. <coughs> and uh, we have uh Richard is not working is Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Well, he had it working, but it's not working now. So, anyway. Richard came down here and fixed the thing and had it working, and we both saw that it was working, and now it's not. So, Richard walked out of the room. That's probably why. So we have been talking about the statue of a perfect man now for a long time and we're we're not coming to a close but we're going to come to a pause maybe <clears throat> because I you know like I was telling you um, starting the first Sunday in January I'm going to be taking both services through the month of January and into February so and then the first weekend of February we're going to be at Brother Joe Green so you'll be doing Sunday school the whole month of January. So if they don't like you, you're going to really prove it. <laughs> but you'll have the whole month of January. Oh, and wow. then then after that, of course, I'm going to the Philippines for three weeks, so you, uh, the rest of you will get to fill in. So be prepared and be ready. But um, we want to go back to where we were. Let me get my history up here, because we were going through a bunch of stuff last night, and I keep... Uh, tagging my history and I got to get back down here to where we were. I'll be reading that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be reading that. Leave it on. Leave it on. Leave it on. I tag a lot of things. We start talking about stuff and I'll tag it and then we can go back and see if any, we start talking about under the blood so you can mark it and there you are. You're right back to what you need to this is a neat app. Some of you that don't have it, you need to get it. It's free, but it's a uh, it's a wonderful tool. Last night we were talking about free moral agent. We were talking about representation, and um, I was looking up the quote where Adam took Eve to itself, but I couldn't find it because you've got to put in the the right thing. It's not the person. Uh, your soul was black. You were born between Satan and Eve. You can really look up a lot of things real quick to, uh, there it is, Brother Kindness, to, uh, like last night in the Bible study, we were talking about certain things, and you could pull the quote up where Brother Brown said it, just like that, and kind of, uh, kind of reiterate what's going on. So, <clears throat> here we are on the Statue of a Perfect Man, right here on this one, this is the one I want right here. Add brotherly kindness then the love of God, the Holy Ghost, Christ and the person of the Holy Ghost comes upon you in the true baptism. I know we've stayed on that a long time, but what I want us to see, and we're going to do some more of that upstairs in, in January with the whole congregation, but the most important thing is the new birth. Right. Knowing that you're born again, knowing that God can even start putting these virtues in your life. Uh, for those of you that weren't at the Bible study last night, that's what Brother Dale's been, that's his concern, is that we may just be in sanctification all these years. Or we may just have a sensation that I've been in the message and I can, see look, because like I said before, at 14 years old I could tell you what serpent seed was. I could explain to you what happened in the garden through the Bible and I wasn't even born again. That's just the ability to read. We have a lot of people in this message that just have the ability to read because their life don't prove it. They don't come to church half the time. They don't do the things of the Lord all the time. Then, you know, it's the life is what's going to show because you can take, as Brother Branham used the illustration in blasphemous names about the the peacock with or the crow with the peacock feather stuck in it. It's going to look like a peacock sometime. But those feathers are going to get shook out one day and you're going to show your true colors. What I want to do is that I want us to, I'm, not, I'm going to leave off the capstone because we got to come here first. 
Well, if we if we if we don't come to here, <clears throat> let's let's just say for a surety, you want to understand what the seals are. You want to understand what those things are. The true, when I say the true message of Brother Branham, that doesn't mean that part of it was false. But Brother Branham came to do one thing, or two things actually, but one thing he came to specifically do that no man had ever done before is to bring this down to a group of people, which is the seals, the thunders, and the things of God that no man has ever looked at before. Right here, man, there's been many men come to this right here. Many men. First church age was full of these brethren and sisters, okay? Full of brothers and sisters that had all these working in their lives. So Brother Branham did not come to bring us the statue of a perfect man. It's always been there. He come to bring us the completion of the statue of the perfect man. Because remember, the Bible says the headstone was rejected. All right, so if the headstone was rejected, then that's all they had. If the headstone was rejected, then it's just like the natural pyramid doesn't have a cap on it. Yeah. Right. Why doesn't it have a cap on it? Because it's a type of right. your journey. So you and I must have these virtues working in our life, and then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost Christ, and the person of the Holy Ghost comes upon you in the true baptism of the Holy Ghost, and you get all these virtues sealed in you. Now it says sealed in you. It doesn't say it gives them to you. You read that? You already got them, right? That Holy Ghost doesn't give you the virtues. But it is the same Holy Ghost that gives you the virtues. But at this stage, or at this stage of development, that Holy Spirit is sealing the virtues in. It's making sure that that vessel will work. And it'll work for God, not for man. All right? So that's why he says, see, he says, in the true baptism of the Holy Ghost, not that this one's false, but this one up here is more of the same one that gave you the virtues. But this one doesn't come to give you any more virtue. It comes to seal in what you have. And you get all these virtues sealed in you. Then God lives in a tabernacle called the building. Now, he lived in it down here. But remember, he lived in it in the part that you let him live in. It's a seed planted down there. That's right. Everything. Well, this is the. You don't. You can't plant up here. No. Right. It's reproduced right. up there. You you don't plant the seed in the air, right. and it grows from seed to stalk. I mean, seed to stalk to leaf to root. Right. Right. You seeds planted. Here's your roots, because that's your foundation, just like a big tree. It's got a big, wide foundation, and then it grows up. Then what happens is all the fruit is where? Not in the root. Right. It was at one time. Right. Right. It was in the seed. The root at one time is where all... That's what's <clears throat> so profound about nature. I've got apple trees. That apple tree comes from one seed. But now out of that one seed that we planted in the ground, or a man did, we bought it when it was about this high, hundreds of apples have come from that that has seed in it that if you plant it in the ground it'll bring forth another several hundred same thing with God that's the spiritual multiplication of God is remember it's not seeds as of many but one seed which is Christ right so out of that one seed comes a many membered body now we got people in the body Wesley Luther Columba Martin Irenaeus and Paul and then this age, Wesley, and all those in here. And they got to a certain part of this, <clears throat> but they could not attain to this part of the cap coming down. Because when Jesus was walking on the earth, it was the whole pyramid. The whole, every bit of that pyramid. There was nothing. Now when he was rejected, man cut him off. And that what he said? The Bible said he was rejected. He was a rejected stone. In other words, the stone was cut off so man couldn't attain to that right at that time. Everybody okay with that? When he died and went to heaven, the headstone went with him. He was the headstone. He was the head of the church. All right? And uh, like we were talking about last night, we were talking about the seed doctrine. And... Um, 
it just came to me that if, if see, Jesus was standing on earth in his body, and the little woman at the well was standing there. Well, now, if he would have imparted eternal life, and I know what Brother Brown said, but you got to remember what he said. But if he imparted eternal life to that woman standing there as the new birth, that's two bodies standing there, and that you can't have that. I don't know if anybody got that last night or not, but you should have understood that. There's no way, because remember, Jesus breathed on the disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Well, now, they didn't get the Holy Ghost, because he was the body. If, he, if they would have received the Holy Ghost, they would have become his body. Right? Right, exactly. Right? So, he had to go up, though, and send that Holy Ghost down to make them the body of Christ. Right. So he was gone. The world will see me no more, but you'll see me. In other words, you're going to see me inside of you. You're not going to see me physically. Because Brother Branham explains many times that Brother Branham can't, uh, that Jesus Christ can't come back to this earth until the millennium. That's when all of his body's together again. That's when everything's done and redemption's over for the Gentiles and for the Jews. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you come back in the millennium, the, the redemption is over for the Gentiles and Jews. I didn't say redemption was over. Because he's still redeeming the foolish virgin at the white throne. He's giving people eternal life. So he's still redeeming right up to the future home coming down. And to me, see, the future home is a type of that. Where's it coming down? It's coming down on the earth. All right? The future home is coming down. To me, this is the future home. That is the future home. That's where everything lays is in that capstone message. So what we've got to do is, though, is with this year coming up, if you want to make a New Year's resolution, make this one, that you're going to be standing right here by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. right. And the virtues are going to be working in your life, not trying to find them. That's right. All right? And that's for all of us. We, we all need to have this before we can even understand this. That's, right. that's why I don't, <clears throat> that's why many people, I believe in the message, have false doctrine, is because they're presuming. They're venturing without authority. That's what presuming is. Venturing without authority. So they're venturing way up here. And maybe some of them not even been here yet. You can't you can't teach a false doctrine and be here. Right, right, right. Now you might could teach a false doctrine when you're just born again and you're getting started as a baby, because babies make mistakes. Hey, how many of your kids said something that they wasn't supposed to? Right. Same way with you and I. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear the old kid say something, you go, where'd that come from? We see that, that's just, that's the growth development of the child. Same way with here. You might say a few things, but you know what? Once the true word's presented to you, you will turn from that because you'll have, what you'll do is you'll receive virtue from whoever that was that's delivering it to you. Right. Yeah. So we're going to break that down a little bit more when we do it upstairs with the whole congregation. <clears throat> That virtue, that strength has to come from a spirit-filled person that's not just a baby in Christ. Because babies, put five babies in this room, leave them alone, and come back five years later, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. Right? Because right. it's babies teaching babies. That's right. Babies do baby things. That's right. right? That's right. So, you got to have an adult there to lead those children up into adulthood. <clears throat> same way with God. God raises His kids the same way you raise yours. It's just that He don't make mistakes when we do. All right? But as we come up through here, that's virtue coming from someone. You must get the correct knowledge. They've got to have temperance and patience with us, with us, as congregation. Got to have godliness and brotherly kindness. You got to have all those things working because I can't I can't tell you about virtue if I don't have it. And virtue has to be something that comes out that you pull from the minister upstairs. You pull that virtue. If you don't have any, then you know what you're going to do. You're going to sit there just like we do, and we hear a false doctrine upstairs. What something happens, something clicks, or something rings in your heart. It's not really a true virtue. Uncertain sound. Right? right? Uncertain sound, you're right. You're tuned to a certain thing. You're tuned to a certain thing, and you're hearing, and you're hearing, and you're hearing, and all of a sudden, boing! That's right. And you know what you do? You know, you, 
And, and your thought, hey, listen, we're humans, and we're sitting there listening. And then all of a sudden, something, something comes forth that we have not been taught, that maybe is not correct, or even that we don't understand. Now, see, there's a difference between that. That's right. I've sat and listened to people that I didn't understand, yeah. but you got to stay open enough to listen, right. consider the end of the conversation. That's right. <clears throat> but then there's people that sit there that you're on the line, you're listening, you're listening, and all of a sudden, you say, oh, that ain't right. There's a difference in that. There's a difference because the way you're taught is you come up to a certain place and you're drawing virtue. Sure, you can draw virtue. Hey, listen. They drew a certain amount of virtue from Judas' character. Sure, they did. I said a certain amount. I didn't say godly because he wasn't born again. I said, but they drew a certain amount of virtue from Judas because Judas preached the gospel and people got healed. People got saved. Or not saved, but come to the to the word of the hour. Right. Everybody understand that? Right. <clears throat> so Judas did have, Judas was in tight, was justified and sanctified. Right. So in, even in a sanctified condition, that's why the anointed ones at the end time is so hard to see, but it's really easy to see once you see it, that they are here. They're not coming, they're here. And they've been here right. since this first church age. Anointed ones at the end time is us, but there have been anointed ones, Paul said, grievous wolves. They've come among you and are now here, he said. But what Brother Branham has done, he has come to restore that, bring that back up, but then bring a message that no one else brought except the man that was standing here with the headstone, Jesus Christ. He was standing here with that <clears throat> anointing on him because he was the Son of Man. All right, so you get to the Son of Man ministry, this is the Son of Man ministry. This is the Son of God ministry. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yes. This is the Son of God ministry. Mm -hmm. This is God in spirit form in a human being doing the work. Just like He did on the day of Pentecost. Son of God. This is the Son of Man ministry, but I want you to, I want you to take this one point though. <clears throat> if Paul was a Holy Ghost filled person and he had the Son of God living in him that was God in human flesh what is the Son of Man? God in human flesh the Son of Man never left the earth it just was hidden from man it was even hidden from Paul because he didn't come to the position but now that we've come up to here and we can look back down through here you see that is the Son of God ministry, but it was God in human flesh working through a group of people. Yeah. So it was the Son of Man ministry the whole time. Yes, they just was he just wasn't revealed, Brother Ram said, to be revealed. Now look, to reveal something is not putting something together and then saying here it is. No, to reveal something is there all the time. That's right. Everybody got that? It was here all the time. Right. It just had to be made known or had to be revealed. <clears throat> the seals, listen, Jesus preached the seals in Matthew right. 24. Right. But who knew that? Even Paul didn't know it. But see, it wasn't time for the headstone ministry to come. It couldn't come down here. Right. It had to come. There had to be a bride tree. There had to be the tree eat down, restored back, and then the headstone come down. Did everybody understand that? Right? Paul couldn't preach the Son of Man ministry like Brother Branham preached it and put all this together. Now, Paul was a pattern messenger. Mm -hmm. Right? Paul was a prophet. He was a pattern messenger. He was the one you pattern everything by. But he wasn't given the uh, Revelations 10 7 in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he begins to sound. The mystery of God should be finished. Now, Paul didn't finish that mystery. Paul says in the Bible, I finished the mystery in which I am called. I think we read that last night. Paul finished the ministry he was called for, which was not the Son of Man ministry. All right? So did Irenaeus, Martin, Columbus, Luther, Wesley. But when we come to this age, the first part of Malachi 4 was the Son of God ministry from 1947 to 1963 was the Son of God restoring the gifts back, restoring, and to me when I say gifts, the first thing you think of is what? 
Speaking in tongues. And, yeah, right. There's nine spiritual gifts. Those two are the least of the two, of the nine. Right. There is these spiritual gifts that we must have in our church working to be a strong church. That's why Ephesus was a strong church. They was 12 people, but those 12 people were full of the Holy Ghost and had these virtues working in their life, okay? Not to say they probably didn't have any problems, but you know what? They had a lot less problems. All right, because of that Son of Man, I mean that Son of God ministry being in their life. All right? So the Son of God ministry down through seven church ages. Brother Ram said he died Son of Man, raised Son of God. Why did he die Son of Man? Because that was the word in flesh. All right? Yes. He raised back up the word in flesh. But when he come back on the day of Pentecost, he didn't bring his flesh back. That's right. Okay? He didn't bring his flesh back. His flesh didn't come back. He sent back the Holy Ghost to quicken the flesh of the people that was on the earth. Get out of town. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so anyway. Where are we? Where is flesh? He didn't send his flesh. Right. That's why, that's why the Holy Ghost couldn't be given while Jesus was on the earth. There'd be two bodies. That's right. Yes. It'd be two bodies. It'd be Jesus and his own body right here on the earth at the same time. Now, how do you, you say, well, that's going to happen in the millennium. That's when everything's over. Yeah. That's when all redemption is over. That's why the soul of man cannot have anything in it but sin and, and, and death and sorrow until Jesus comes and redeems that soul. If any soul that's standing on this earth had Jesus in them, that was two bodies, and there's no way that can happen. Jesus died, Son of Man. That flesh died. But it raised back up. The Son of God, which is Spirit God, is the one that went to hell and preached to those people that were in hell. Right? Jesus' flesh didn't go to hell. Jesus' flesh stayed up here. That's a sacrifice. It stayed in the tomb right here. But the soul went to hell and preached to the people down here. All right? Son of God. He said, I'm the Son of God. I'm the one you turned down. Then he comes back and picks that body up, quickens it, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. So he had control over the flesh and the, and the and, and spirit. I mean, soul had control over the flesh at that time. He said, well, it had control later. No, he said, not my will, but thy will. There was a factor in there that he was human when he was here. Mm -hmm. right. Though he was Almighty God, there was a factor that he could be tempted and all these things. When he come back up out of that grave, he could not be tempted. He was done, finished, and over with. He was the Almighty, the one that stood before the foundation of the world. He had just picked up a body of flesh that he was supposed to have had there not been a fall. He had to come down here, get a body of flesh, take it back up glorified, send back the Holy Ghost into a group of people, then now that's God in human flesh on the earth. But the understanding was the Son of God. God, Spirit God. That's why Paul never called him Son of Man. Irenaeus never called him Son of Man. They didn't understand that that... Sure, they said, well, I'm God in... Paul said, I'm God in human flesh. Mm -hmm. That's what he was telling me. He said, you'll be judged by my gospel. If an angel comes from heaven, preaches anything besides what I preach, let him be accursed. So what was Paul saying? Whatever God was, was standing right there in Paul, speaking to those people. But he never had the understanding. See, Brother Brown then comes, and God gives him the understanding, 63 to 65, gives him the understanding that, hey... That's me standing there in human flesh. Amen. And that's what's going to change us, people. That's the only thing. That's what couldn't change Paul, Irenaeus. Because remember, <clears throat> let me get this right. The Son of God is not commissioned to change your body until the end time. Right. Right. That's right. Because why didn't it change Paul's body down here when the Son of God entered in him, when he received a new birth? The commission was is for, remember, I will restore. Say Joel. He, Joel is what kept me from doing it. I will restore. What did say, brother? All the words got me fulfilled. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all fulfilled in Paul. Right. Paul never spoke of the Son of Man as Jesus spoke of himself. Right. But he did speak of Jesus in the pure form for that day. Mm -hmm. But you keep coming up, coming up. The word was eat down. The word was being restored. And it comes back up to Malachi 4. Turn the hearts of the babies, children, to the fathers back here. Brother Brown had to bring them back to that foundation. He said, you Lateran people, 
He said, you think you've had the latter rain, which is up here, which is the harvest rain. You, he think, they think you, you think you've had that rain. He said, you've never had the former rain first, which is the teaching or the planting. Mm -hmm. Right here. Right. He had to get everybody back to right here. Mm -hmm. Then he could work them up. Right. And it took 50 years after he's been dead for us to just begin to realize we need these. Amen. Amen. I know. I know. 50 years after he died. 50 years after he died to realize that that was not just a good sermon that he preached. Yeah. It's like a brother said, and I really enjoyed it, 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 and I think I mentioned it the other day at Brother, <clears throat> brother Mike Oltings. I tried to you know, bring it in a little bit. But it's the centerpiece. Mm -hmm. but you've got a table full of food. But what does that centerpiece do? That centerpiece draws your attention right. to what's on the table. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And it draws it into the center of the table. Well, the, to me, Brother made a good point. He said, this is the center of the message. That's right. Because you, and I'm going to try to draw that. I'm going to try to do that, and we're going to try to do it upstairs on the screen to bring us up because that's got to be the centerpiece before you get seals or change of the body or son of man ministry or anything over here. That's got to be your center focus. That's right. It's right there. To me, that's the hinge. That's the hinge point. We've got people working down in here, and that's fine and okay. But bro, Brother Brown said God will have a mature church. A mature church. This is a mature church. This is not. But we got to go on beyond the mature church part. Right. Ephesus was a mature church because they had all these working in their life. Yes. But they didn't have this. This was rejected. This was left off. The body wasn't complete. There has to be a group of people that that divine love has to come down on, and that is adoption. Mm -hmm. Remember, we, see, we, we receive in Romans 8, we receive the spirit of adoption, mm -hmm. whereby we cry, Daddy, Daddy, or Father, Father. Mm -hmm. We don't receive adoption. There, there's a process that goes through that. I was like the analogy we use with the, the kids with the car. Now, the kid's got all the faculties that he needs. He's a human. He's got a brain. He's got arms. He's got legs. He's got eyes. He's got ears. He can see. He can smell. But why don't you give a five-year-old the car, the keys to your car? He's not mature enough. He's not mature enough to be able to handle the situation. Same thing with these virtues. If you're not mature enough, God's not going to give them to you. So you've got to mature as God adds them to you on the way up through your journey. Yes. And remember, it's life and godliness. So it's your life that you live plus the godliness that you show. All right? It's true. Yes, sir. So it's not like, it's not like uh, you're pushing yourself into these things. Like, i got to get some, some virtue. Yeah. You know? So, okay, i got virtue. No. All right, now i go to the next, you know. And... Uh, and that's how it kind of makes it makes you feel like you know that you can't. Right. But I like what you just said that that you know God knows when you're mature enough that's to right. come to the next point. That's you right. Know, to the and it's not like a uh, like I said I've never liked these lines, but it is lines there for a reference. Because it's not like you're going to fill a tank up and you're going to say, well, now brother Luis, you got about a quarter tank of virtue there. You need you know no no that's that to me they ought to turn them this way. Virtue goes all the way up, knowledge goes all the way up, temperance. You don't you don't get virtue and then say, well, I've done that. You know, Anna Anna is almost a doctorate, got a doctorate degree. Now she can't she's not gonna lay down what she learned in kindergarten. No, that's the foundation. She's built upon all that to get those degrees. Same way with this. Like Brother Brown said, he said, You try to jump up here, he said, You'll fall. Right? That's right. So you don't don't try to jump up here. I've always said God will show you where you at at any time. He'll make one thing happen. And listen, if you fail one time with God, one time, you know one thing for sure. You don't have it. One time. Now God's gracious. He'll give you some time. But still, there'll be one point and you'll say, I don't have that no more. I don't have that awful feeling I have toward people or that awful this or that that. Or this. You know, temperance. I, I got a lot more temperance. I, can, I got a lot more patience. Got uh, Lord, I'm becoming more like you. You've shown me that I'm becoming more like you. I'm doing the things of God instead of doing the things of the world. 
So there's somewhere in there that you're going to know because God's obligated to tell you. Yes. See, just like just like the world. I'm going to make this point and then we've got to go. The world says that when uh, Ibogen reaches 16 years old, according to the books and according to history and according to uh, you know, doc, they, they build it on all kind of things. She can drive a car. At 16, she has come to a point. Well, now, how did that come to? Man just didn't say, well, 16 is a good number. We'll just. No, there's something that goes with that. There's, there's um, research. There, there's research and development. Statistics. There's statistics. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. There was, <laughs> there's statistics. Well, you know where your statistics are? Right there. Right here. Amen. This is your statistic sheet. Brother Bram said, when a man possesses these kind of things, then the Holy Ghost comes upon him. No matter, you might speak with tongues, impersonate any gift God has, you might do that, but until these virtues here go into you, you're still off the real, true foundation of faith. But when these virtues grow in, so it's a growth development, grow in, and you added that to that, then you are a living monument, you are a living, moving idol. Not a motionless person. All right. Any questions? I was you were talking about it being the statue of perfect man being the centerpiece, and I was just I came to me. This is a theme. I mean, when you have a centerpiece too, there you it's the theme mm -hmm. Thank you. of mm -hmm. the event. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You bring. You understand that. Yeah. You bring. This is Christmas time, so we have a theme. We have a centerpiece that brings the theme of the event in. Well, the theme of the event. To get this thing right here, and I'm, I call it a thing, I'm sorry, but this this headstone to come on this church, this living, it don't come on dead people. It comes on live people. So it's got to come on the people that are alive. You've got to see that that centerpiece has brought you to the, the theme of this whole thing is to get the virtues. Then God can give us the headstone, which is the seals, for the body change. That's what the seals were given for was the change of this body. There's not been a requirement in any other age but this one to have our body changed while we're still alive. Everybody else had just enough word to get them in the grave and get them out of the grave. In 63, Brother Brown was the only man that had that, right? Absolutely. He was the only man. Him and Jesus Christ are the only two men that we know for a fact had it at that time in 63 up until 65. But you remember, too, he died. That's right. Brother Brown died. But likewise, not. Be baptized. He'll do this. He'll do this. He'll do this. Right. Promise. Right. But you gotta get these promises down right. here first, right. or you can't. That's the jumping up the ladder. Nope. On Brother Rush saying you jump up three rounds, you'll fall off. Fall off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -